Billy woke up in the middle of the night, awakened by one of his usual nightmares. But this time, they were worse. Instead of seeing them die, he was the one who killed them. Cold sweat rolled down his forehead. His eyes were open wide. They felt like he hadn't closed them in hours. The nightmare played in his head all over again, like someone just pressed the rewind button and played it all from the very beginning. Billy's hands felt frozen like pitchforks, shaking, trying to get a grip onto something. But his eyes just stared blankly at the blankets covering his legs. When the nightmare was over, he raised his head slowly, and right in front of his bed he saw a big yellow T-Rex, wearing what seemed to be a pretty big but tight precise sombrero. It was a pretty small T-Rex, but it was big, nonetheless. His head touched the ceiling, and he had his tail wrapped around the floor. It was way too big for the room. Billy tried to scream, but suddenly he was hit on the head. It felt like he had been hit with a hammer. If the hammer was real, it would have blown Billy's head to bits. Could you imagine the wall covered in blood, brains, and bits of his head? Could you imagine that? The image stayed for a couple of seconds in his mind before he focused back on the dinosaur. A dinosaur Billy could swear he had met before. As the dinosaur leaned forward, Billy could feel the dinosaur's warm breath on his face. Billy could now make out more details from the sombrero, a light brown felt, crimson and white floral patterns on the sides, and, to top it all off, shiny gold glitter on the white spots. The dinosaur stared at Billy for almost a full minute. Billy was surprised to find that he was not only not afraid of the dinosaur, but he was kind of safe around it. He felt kind of safe around him. The dinosaur opened his mouth and spoke. His mouth did not move when he talked, like someone was inside the dinosaur and was talking from the inside. You okay, Danny? Asked the dinosaur with a deep voice, which oddly enough sounded more human than anything else. Danny nodded slowly as he dragged his knees up to his chest and wrapped his arms around them, eyeing the dinosaur, hoping he was here to help. The dinosaur raised his head, and then slowly looked at the digital clock sitting at Danny's nightstand. The clock shined the number 625 on its screen, and the dinosaur turned his head to Danny, then spoke again. Nightmares again? You should really go back to sleep, Teddy. Teddy shook his head quickly as he unfolded his legs and said, I I'm afraid of the nightmares, he said in what sounded like a whimper. The dinosaur looked around the room. His tail slammed against one of the nightstands, knocking it over. But neither the boy nor the dinosaur cared. Not even not even his parents, who were sleeping next door. What's your name? Teddy asked the dinosaur, as he looked at all the toys sitting on Teddy's shelf. The dinosaur stared blankly at Teddy. Do you not remember my name? <laughs> We used to be good friends, Steve. Steve blinked, not remembering being friends with any dinosaur. But that might explain why he felt that way with Jerry. Yes, Jerry. You remember now. It's Jerry, right? Steve asked as he crawled to the other end of the bed. The dinosaur looked over and nodded with a smile on his reptilian lips. He then turned around, holding a teddy bear with the name Joshua on it. This one's yours, right? Jerry handed it over to Joshua who now hopped off the bed, almost tripping on the dinosaur's tail. Once Joshua got back his balance, he nodded and took it, squeezing it in a hug. Can we play a game? Joshua smiled. But Joshua turned with a smile and nodded. They both sat on the ground and played with Joshua's toys. Joshua played as the teddy bear, and Jerry played as the man in the jacket, with the knife in his right pocket. They both made jokes and laughed as they played. They played checkers. Joshua was the black ones, and Jerry was the red ones. They played robbers and cops. Joshua the cop, Jerry the robber. They played firefighters. Joshua was the firefighter, and Jerry was the knife. They played superheroes. Joshua was the superhero, and Jerry was the multiple stab wounds. They played knights and dragons. Joshua was the gun, and Jerry was the bullet that pierced the skull. They played checkers, and Susan was the dead body, and Jerry was the father. Finally, they played hide-and-seek in Susan's bedroom. Susan was the sin, and Jerry was the broken glass. 
They kept playing around until it was time for Susan to get to school. He heard the door of one of his parents' bedroom open, and the steps of someone walking towards her bedroom. Susan panicked. The room was a mess. Toys were all over the floor, and there was a dinosaur. She turned to the dinosaur, and he was gone. Billy's mother opened the door and frowned at the sight of all the toys lying on the floor. After a good scolding and some breakfast, Billy was ready for school. Billy stood in front in front of the door entrance, waiting for his mother to bring him his favorite Donald Duck winter hat from his room. She quickly ran down the stairs to get the hat. She gave it to Billy, and she opened the door. The bus was about to arrive at any moment outside. The front lawn looked completely white due to all the snow covering it, except for a spot with yellow snow that his father was trying to cover with more snow. That asshole Lucas took a piss drunk on our lawn this morning again, the father said to his wife, between growls of anger and tiredness. Billy was about to walk out when his mother got in the way. She dropped to her knees and gave Billy a little kiss on the cheek. I'm sorry I scolded you, honey, but you can't make a mess like that in your room again. I hope I wasn't too harsh on you. It was one of your nightmares, right? Meanwhile, the father had the idea of following the asshole Lucas the next time he took a piss and slam his head with a shuffle over and over again until his brain scattered all over the white snow, like painting on the white canvas, and then take a smoke while sitting on the dead body. The image flashed through his head. A little smile showed on his face, but again, it was just an idea. Billy got on the bus, and the day unfolded like any other day. The bus drove down the lane. The sky had not a single cloud in it, and the sun shined so much that the snow was almost able to blind somebody. The bus stopped right in front of Billy's house. He hopped off the bus carefully, not to miss a step, and fall, and then he made his way to the house. He stopped by the doorstep, and it rang the bell. His mother opened the door and smiled down at Billy, who proceeded to walk it rewind. The bus drove down the lane. The sky had a bunch of clouds, but the sun shined so much that the snow was almost able to blind someone. The snow stopped right in front of Billy's house. He hopped off the bus carefully, not to miss a step, and fall on his face. And then he made his way to the house. He stopped by the doorstep and rang the doorbell. His mother opened the door and stared at Billy, who proceeded to rewind. The bus drove down the lane. The sky had plenty of clouds, and the sun shined so much the snow was able to blind someone. The bus stopped in front of Billy's house. He hopped off the bus carefully, not to miss a step, and fall on his face and bleed on the clean sidewalk. Then he made his way to the house. He stopped by the doorstep and rang the doorbell. His mother opened the door and frowned at Billy, who proceeded to rewind. The bus drove down the lane. The sky was cloudy. There was, not a, there was no sign of the sun. No sign of the sun. There was no sign of the sun. The bus stopped right in front of Billy's house. His house. He hopped off the bus carefully. He didn't miss a step, and he didn't fall on his face. He, and, you know, if he fell on his face, he would have broken his little skull, and then he would have soiled the clean sidewalk with his brains. And then he made his way to the house. He stopped by the doorstep and rang the doorbell. No response. He rang it again, and there was no response, and he realized that the door was open with two cops looking inside, looking down at two dead bodies on the kitchen floor. Jimmy stared at the two dead bodies. He could not see their face. Excuse me, are you Jimmy? One of the cops asked, who noticed Steve by the door. Steve nodded very slowly. The cops sighed and then said, We are sorry about what happened. We will try to find who did it, okay? The cops stared at Joshua's eyes, trying to comfort him. The other cop was scratching his head. It looks like a dinosaur did it. It doesn't get better. It doesn't get better than this. Rewind. 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 It does it. It just does it. It just does it. It, does it. it sucks. Oh, I need a drink.